A liquidation can be started in two ways. The first is an application to court, and the second is by means of a special resolution that the shareholders of the company pass. Now, we always recommend an application to court, especially if there are um, monies owed to SARS, because the minute you owe money to SARS, you need a formal application right from the beginning. Once your business is in liquidation, a liquidator is appointed, and that liquidator comes in, he assesses the value of all the assets of the business, he sells those assets, and he pays the creditors in accordance with their ranking. Now, ranking means where do they stand in the hierarchy of creditors. So your secured creditors, like your banks, they stand right at the top. Then you have your preferent creditors, such as your employees and SARS, they come next. And then lastly, you have your concurrent creditors, and those are creditors with no special ranking. Your secured creditors are paid out of the sale of assets. So for example, if you've got a bond over a property, then your secured creditor will be paid out of the proceeds of the sale of that property, whereas your preferent and concurrent creditors are paid out of what's called the free residue, which is when your assets are sold and those assets are not encumbered by any security. Being a concurrent creditor is a very, very bad place to be. You are unlikely to see most of your money and you really are in a position of vulnerability. So we, as far as possible, encourage our clients to take security over any monies owed to them. So business rescue, much like liquidation, can also be brought either by means of a resolution or by a court application. In the case of a court application, in addition to explaining to a court why the business is in distress, you also have to explain to the court how you think the business is going to be saved. And to do that, you need to have a business rescue plan. Once a business is placed in business rescue, the business rescue practitioner has to call a meeting of creditors and present his or her plan to those creditors, who then vote on that plan. Um, obviously, I'm simplifying it hugely, but once that process has been undertaken, the plan is then implemented and creditors are paid in accordance with that plan. So turnaround is the most exciting of the three options because they're the most creative. It's also the most high risk. Normally with a turnaround, you get a turnaround professional, either a business coach or a business consultant, who comes in to see where a business is struggling and gives advice to the business owner on how to improve matters. It's very important to understand that turnaround can only happen where the business is still trading and is relatively profitable, so that there is some cash available. And also it's important to note that the minute a business has a situation where it is insolvent, so its assets are exceeded by its liabilities, then your turnaround or your business rescue options really are no longer on the table. A liquidation becomes pretty much your only option. Once a business has been placed in liquidation, a director of a company or a member of a CC has an obligation to assist the liquidator in his or her duties. This means that the director has to provide whatever documentation the liquidator needs, information with regards to the creditors, and any other assistance that the liquidator may require to perform his or her duties. What you're going to be on the hook for is any debt that you signed surety for. So it's very important if you're running a business that you're very careful where and when you sign surety because that way the liability that is limited within your company spills out to you personally. The other thing to bear in mind is if you have been trading recklessly or under insolvent circumstances, it could well be that you're exposed to legal liability which is another reason why we always advise clients if things start going wrong to act as quickly as possible. Although turnaround is the most high risk of your three options, it is the option that leaves you in control of your business. That said, in my experience, businesses seldom fail for any reason other than poor management. If you've made a mistake, and you're not, in, not able to get your business out of trouble, you may need a third party to come in and help you.